Hello, good day. So our lesson for today is partnership dissolution or changes in ownership. You could also watch ad our other videos about partnership so that you would be able to see the stages of partnership. So let's go. So our learning objectives for this lesson is to learn the definition of dissolution, learn the causes of dissolution, and the admission of a partner. Okay, so a partnership dissolution, according to Article 1829 of the Philippine Civil Code, that partnership is terminated but continues until the winding up of the partnership affair is completed. So take note, dissolution is quite different from winding up because in dissolution, the partnership still or the remaining partner or the additional partner can still do business together. And like in winding up, meaning there is a cessation of the business or meaning that the partnership is already closing. So there will be no more operations. So partnership dissolution is usually dilutions of the profit and loss ratio of the, in of the partners among the partnership is when a partner is added or when the current partner leaves or retire from the partnership. Take note that when a new partner is added, example, if you have A and B and they are 50-50 in the partnership, so each one 50%, when an additional partner C goes within the partnership, it will now become one-third. The partner now would be diluted in each PNL ratio because it is now third. And suppose there are three entity or four partners and one leaves or retire, there will still be a change in the profit and loss ratio, okay? So, let's now differentiate partnership dissolution with the partnership liquidation. So, take note, partnership dissolution is when the original association for the purpose or carrying out has activities has ended but not yet terminated. So, take note when the carrying activities has ended only, but the partner's operations still go on, but not terminated. So, what is now terminated? So, when the partnership is being terminated, it is now called partnership liquidation. So, meaning the partnership is now liquidated or there is a cessation of the business. So, what are now the causes of the solution? So take note that the partnership usually has a limited life. That's why it's a limited life because it could be dissolved anytime. So number one is the admission of partner. Number two, it could be withdrawal or retirement of the partner. And three, the death of the partner. And lastly, incorporation of the partnership. But take note, this one will have a separate video, video for this particular topic. So, a partnership or a partner can only be admitted with the consent of all the continuing partner because take note that the partnership is built merely by trust or confident with each other. So, therefore, any admission or retirement of the partner should be consented or all every partner has to agree with the partnership, with the admission of this particular partner, okay? So, this is the admission of the partner. And it could be done in two things. It could be purchase of an interest from one partner or investment of asset in the partnership by the new partner. So let's see. For a parma entry, so what's our usual entry? The entry would usually debit seller's name so that it would deduct or eliminate this particular partner in the partnership. And then we credit the buyer's capital so that it would now be added up to our capital account okay so we have three methods for this one we have the partnership or the partner the new partner purchase a pr purchase price of the interest is sold to a new partner maybe equal to the value of the interest sold so we don't have any accounting problem with this one its purchase price is equal to the book value we also have less than the book value of the interest sold so meaning you paid less than the book value and then lastly, you pay higher than its book value or greater than the book value of the interest sold. So this are usually, let's have some examples. So for case one, take note, this is purchase of interest from the partnership. So 
Carr and Kevin are partners with a capital balance of 100,000 and 50,000. They share a profit and loss equally. Richel is a new partner. So take note, Richel joined the partnership. Richel paid 20% interest of Carr by paying 20,000. Take note, it's only Carr in Richel transaction. Although for sure, Kevin is already informed that Richel will be admitted as a new partner. So let's try our entry. So take note, we have 20% of Carr's capital is 20,000. So take note, Richel purchased 20% interest to, ca to of Carr by paying 20,000. So, Carr's book value of share is 20,000 and Richel pay 20,000. So, the purchase price and the book value is equal. But take note, this is only transaction between Carr and Richel. So, the entry would now be debit Carr's capital 20,000 and then debit Richel capital 20,000. Okay? So, suppose case 2, instead, it's still equal to the book value but this time, Richelle purchased 20% interest of both the old partner by paying 20% to Kevin and 20% to Carr. So, she paid 30000 So, it could now be 100 times 20%, 20000 and then for Kevin, 50 times 10. So, or the old partner, 150 times 20, it's 30. So, you have now debit Carr, 20, and debit Kevin, 10, and debit Richelle Capital, 300. Take note, for the purchase... It's just between the partners and the new partner. So, the partnership is what? It's not included with the transaction. So, whatever the difference between the purchase price and the book value, it's not reflected in our partnership books. Why? Because of our entity concept. That the partner and the partnership is separate from the business. Okay? So, therefore, whatever, whether it's, whether, whether the partner accept equal, so it would still be, the recording would still be as if it's, the purchase price is equal to the book value. Unless, there is a statement that's stating that it is a revaluation of the asset. Or the goodwill is to be recognized, recognized for the purchase. Okay? Because it's just merely between the partner. So, if, if for example, for this one, we shall pay 40000 then it's still be recorded at 30000 because she is paying not to the partnership but to the partner for only to Carr and Kevin, okay? okay? So next, case four, we have the new partner invest in the partnership. This method is where the partner transact with the partner as a whole. So take note, this time it's different from the other one wherein the new partner purchase among the partners. This one, the purchase... The purchase was to the partnership. So anything is all, anything, any transaction within that bound will now be recorded in our partnership book. So the new partner's investment could be equal to the part, new partner's proportion of the partnership book value. So meaning the investment is equal to the book value. It's just as if in the purchase price, it's purchase price is equal to the book value. Then we also have the new partner's investment more than the partner's proportion of the book value so meaning that the investment is higher and the or the purchase price is higher than the book value and lastly the new partner investment is less than the partnership proportion of partnership book value or in short this is where the purchase price is lesser than the book value okay so let's try this we have the total agreed capital so how we do compute it and then prior capital of the old partner, the investment of the new partner should equal. Think that the total agreed capital is equal to the prior capital of the old partner plus the investment of the new partner's proportion or the percentage of the capital of the new partner. The proportion in the profit and loss ratio. And then we also have the total contributed capital. It's usually the prior capital of the old partner equals or plus the capital contribution of the new partner. Because we would be using the TAC as the total agreed capital and the total contributed capital, TCC, for our future computation. Because this usually involved now in our investment in the partnership. So, let's try it. Investment in the partnership. Usually, investment cost or equal to the agreed value. If it's equal, 
then no bonus goodwill or revaluation is being what? Is being entered in the partnership book because it's just equal. Meaning the payment and the one that he, the partner, the new partner is purchasing is just the same. However, if there is an investment cost is not equal or is greater than or less than to the agreed capital, it could be revaluation of asset or it could result to revaluation of asset, recognition of goodwill, and allocation of bonuses. Okay? So this usually, if it's if the investment cost is higher, the bonus and the allocation is usually belong to the old partner. Whereas if it's the other way around or the investment cost is less than, the bonus and the good will only pertain to our new party. So we have now some poor problem for this one. We have KR partnership has a book value of three hundred thousand and a percent and a profit percentage on January 1, 2020 as follow. Car capital two hundred thousand, Kevin's capital hundred thousand, PNL ratio is sixty forty. On January 2, 2020, which is to invest cash in the partnership, which will have 25%, 25% share of profit. So, let's see. So, take note that the old partners have 300. Car won 200 and Kevin 100. The new partner is to pay 110 for 25%. And take note, for this one, since we said the it's just equal that the total contributed and the total agreed is equal. So we just had to compute and it was stated it's bonus to old partner. Why? We usually check on the percentage. So 410,000 times 0.25% is only 102,500. So therefore, there is an increase in the old partner's capital of 7,500. So the 7,500 increase will now be what? Will now be divided among the old partner in their profit and loss ratio. So now the entry would now be debit cash, 110,000. This is for compound entry. Then we have rich capital, only 102,500. And then the 7,500 it is divided into its PNL ratio, where car is 60%, so that's 4,500. And Kevin is only 40% at 3,000. Okay? So how about this one? Instead of 110, rich invest only 90,000. So this time it's a bonus to the new partner. So take note that our total agreed capital is still the same because it's case number one where in the book value and the purchase price of the partner will just be the same or investment in the partner. So we have 300,000 still for the old partner which still composed of Car and Kevin, Car 200, Kevin 100, and then new partner reached only pay 90,000. So we have now the total total contributed capital at 390,000. And the total agreed capital is still 390,000. And 390,000 times 0.25% multiplied by 25% will give us 97,500. So there is a difference between 90,000 and 97,500 of 75. It's a bonus to old partner because Rich is given a higher credit than his investment capital of 90,000, which is now 97,500. So our entry now would now be debit cash, 90,000. And since the old partner is the one giving the bonus, we still divide it according to PNL ratio, but it's a deduction because they are giving an extra credit to the new partner, which is Rich. So, car capital, 4,500 debit. And cabin capital, 3,000 debit. So, we have now rich capital, credit, 97,500. So, it's still balance. And take note, rich only pay 90,000. Next, we have case for revaluation of asset approach. Assume that rich paid 7,500 excess of for land with a book value of 40,000 in appraised value of 7.5 before the admission of the new partner. So take note. So we have now the book value of land per book is only 40,000 and it's appraised to 70,000. Since it's appraised from 40 to 70, we had to create two debit land for additional 30,000. So we debit land 30,000, then we credit 
PNL ratio again, Kevin's capital 12,000 and Carr's capital 18,000. So that is for Kevin, 40% of 30, that's 12, and for Carr, 60% of 30 is 18. So let's see now their capital balances. So remember, Kevin has 100,000 at the beginning before the admission, it's 100. Then adjustment for land, 12,000. So all in all, Kevin has a total capital balance of 112. Where's car? Before the admission, 200. And then adjustment for land, 18,000. So the overall total capital of car is 218,000. Okay. So let's try that case, revaluation. So which is to invest 110,000 to the partnership as revalued asset. So for revalued asset, normally, the total contributed and the total agreed capital is different. So for this one, it, you could do this computation and I'll show you the other one. The usual computation that they do. So old partner, remember you have 300,000 plus 30 for the adjustment. So the total contributed adjusted is 330. The new partner invested 110 for 25%. That's 440. So the total agreed now is 330 and then 110, 440 times 0 0.25, 110. But this is the usual thing that has been done. So, the total contributed capital is still 300 because they did not contribute additional 30,000. Instead, it's just merely a revaluation. But for the total agreed capital, the TAC, it's now 330,000 because you add up the revaluation. Because per agreement of the partnership under the TAC is that the land should now be valued at 70 instead of 40. So, the total agreed would now be 330,000. So, the new partner is still contribute 110,000. So, so, you have the total contributed at 410, but the agreed capital is now 440 because we adjust or they adjust the land to 70,000. So, where would you base the PNL ratio would be the total agreed. So, total agreed is 440,000 times 25, it's now 110,000. And still 75 would now be 330. So our entry now would now be debit cash 110 and credit rich capital 10,000. Because we already do the entry for the revaluation of assets. Okay? But you could also do the entry like debit land, debit cash 110, debit land 30,000, credit rich capital 110,000. Credit car capital 18,000. Credit Kevin capital 12,000. It's just the same. Okay? So, case 5, which is to invest cash of 110,000 to the partnership, goodwill is to be recognized. So, the old partner's contribution still total contributed 300,000. And then the new partner paid 110. So, for goodwill, usually we do the prior and error. So, take note that the total contributed for goodwill should always be less than the total agreed capital unless it's a negative goodwill. Okay? So, let's try. 300 divided 0.75 is only 400,000. So, it is lesser than 410. So, we know that 75 is not to be used. Whereas, 110 divided 0.25 would give us 440,000. So, 440,000 times 25, we know that the new partner really contribute and the agreement to be credit the new partner by 110. So, therefore, it's a bonus to or a goodwill to old partner at 330,000. And the 30,000 would now be still divided into its PNL ratio. So, our entry now would be debit cash, 110,000, credit goodwill, and take note goodwill is only test for impairment and not any more depreciated or amortized. So, we have rich capital, 110,000, car, capital 18,000 and Kevin's capital 12,000. So this is goodwill to be recognized for the old part. So key six new partners investment less than proportion of the partnership book value goodwill to the new partner. So we have now old partner 300,000 and then new partner 80,000. So we have now 380,000. We have 75% that's 400. So we know since it's 400 old partner Total agreed would now be credited at 300. And then 25% of 400 is 100,000. So therefore, this is a goodwill to the new partner. So we debit cash 80,000, debit goodwill 20,000, and credit rich capital 100,000 because we agree that it would now be 100,000 credited to the new partner or to, to rich.
Okay? So, when a new partner retired or withdrew from the partnership, the partnership is also dissolved. But the remaining partner may, con may continue their operation. May continue their operation. So, take note that usually the withdrawal and the retirement and the debt of the partner is just the same. Because one partner will now be leaving the partnership. Okay? So, we do now the withdrawal, retirement, and debt of the partnership. So, it could be sold to the new outsider, sold to the continuing partner, or sold to the partnership. Take note, withdrawal and retirement of the partnership, the statement of financial position, of partnership of Carr, Kevin, and Rich are as follows. December 31, 2019 as follows. So, we have assets cash 50,000 inventories 60,000 other asset 30,000 so the total asset is 140,000 and this is finance 140,000 is financed by a liability of 20,000 cars capital 20,000 Kevin's capital 40,000 and rich capital 16 so the partner share profit and loss in the ratio of 4 is to 2 is to 4 on January 30, 2019 rich decided to withdraw from the partnership the partner decided to close the book as of this date, so to determine interest of rich, profit for six months ended amounted to 60,000, while drawing of car, Kevin and rich amounted to 4,000, 6,000, and 2,000 respectively. Profit and losses are to be shared equally after retirement of rich. Okay, so let's do the entry. So for income summary, for the profit we debit. Income summary account 60,000, cars capital 24, Kevin's capital 12,000, and rich capital 24,000. So we now record that. Withdrawal, we debit Cars Capital 4,000, Kevin's Capital 6,000, and Rich Capital 2,000, and then Credit Cash 12,000. So, credit balance of the partner as of June 30, 2019 would now be, you have now beginning capital of car 20, share in profit 24, less withdrawal 4,000. So, that would mean balance of car 40, Kevin 46, and Rich 82,000. So, Rich sold or case 1 for the retirement withdrawal or debt of the partner. Suppose that sale of interest to a new partner, Rich sold his interest to Igna for 100000 So we debit to eliminate Rich Capital total since the balance is 82000 We debit Rich Capital 82000 and credit Igna Capital 82000 How about the different, which is 18000 It will now go straight to the packet of Rich. Because the transaction between Rich and Igna is just merely to the two of them and not to the partnership. Okay? How about this one? Rich sold his interest to the continuing partner. For Carr and Kevin, for 75000 interest is divided equally. So we have now debit Rich Capital 82000 because that's the balance to eliminate. And then we credit Carr Capital 42000 and Kevin Capital 41000 The different would now just belong to the packet of the loss will now be solely bore by Rich because he's the, she's the one selling the capital account and the partnership is different from the transaction of the partners okay next sale of interest to the partnership so we have now the partners agreed to make immediate settlement to the retiring part partner profit and loss after the retirement of rich will now be divided equally so we debit now rich capital 82,000 and credit cash 82,000 okay so we have now sale of interest to the partnership Suppose that the partner agreed to make an immediate settlement to Rich, retiring partner, the partnership paid Rich 76000 which is less than 6000 of his capital. Profit and loss after retirement of Rich will now be divided equally. So we now have debit, Rich capital 82000 cash 76000 because they said that they only paid 76000 Now the difference would now be credited to the remaining partner according to their PNL ratio. So we have now despite that the that it stated that after capital after rich retirement it, the PNL will be revided equally. It's still on their previous PNL ratio. We debit cars capital 4000 and we credit Kevin's capital 2000. Okay? So it's because of the difference of 6000. Next, what if the partnership agreed to make immediate settlement? of 76,000 and asset is to be revalued other asset is overstated by 15,000 so take note we have now debit rich capital 4 40% or 4 
the ratio of 4 is to 4 is to 2, or 4 to 2 is 2. So we have now rich, cap rich capital debit 6,000, car capital 6,000, and Kevin's capital 3,000, other asset 15,000. Okay, so we would now additional entry that would meet debit rich capital 76,000 and credit cash 76,000. Okay? See, this one, rich capital 76 and cash 76. Because if we do that, the account, it's 82,000 less 6,000 would remain what? 76,000 only. Next, for compound entry, we could also do rich capital 82,000, car capital 6,000, Kevin capital 6, 3,000, and cash 76,000 and other asset 15,000. Okay? So, the partners agree to make immediate settlement to the retiring partner. The partnership paid rich 85,000 using the bonus method to the retiring partner. So if it's bonus method, we debit rich capital 82 because it's only 82. We debit car capital because they are the one who's giving the retiring partner a bonus. So you have now car capital 2,000, Kevin capital 1,000. It's still divided in their PNL ratio. And then we de credit cash, which is the mode of payment to rich 85,000. Debit ca credit cash 85,000. Okay, if it's the other, if it's different, then uh, it could also be bonus to the remaining partner. So the entry will just be the same. If you like this video, kindly please help me reach out more people by hitting the subscribe button below. God bless to you and hope you could comment so that I would be able to answer if you have any other questions. Bye, God bless to you and stay safe.